The Phillips 66 Mountain West Conference Basketball Championships on CSTV is brought to you by Phillips 66, hardworking gas. By EAS, don't waste your workout. By State Farm, who is proud to offer great rates and great service 24-7. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. UNLV has won 12 straight in this building. They look to make it number 13 as they play host to the sixth seed Utah running Utes in our second semifinal of the night from the Mountain West Conference Championships in Las Vegas. First year head coach Jim Boylan, 13 years in the NBA, is first at Utah after two years under Tom Izzo at Michigan State. That's as calm as you'll see him all night. And here's the starting lineup that he's put together, sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings. Neville will be coming off the bench It'll be Luca Dercha, Lawrence Bora, and Carlin Brown in the backcourt. Kim Tilly, the 6'9 sophomore, and Sean Green inside for the Utes who come into this game at 17 and 13. For UNLV, Wink Adams, Rene Rougeau, and point forward Curtis Terry with Corey Bailey inside alongside their shooter, Joe Darger. And head coach Lon Kruger this season named the Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. He's looking to return to the Sweet 16. He took his third team there last year. These Rebels of UNLV in his fourth season here in Las Vegas. And he has not only brought the wins, he has brought the fans back out to the seats here at the Thomas and Mack Center. It can be a big time disadvantage for a road team, especially since this is supposed to be a neutral court. These two teams split their meetings this season. The last time was the season finale here at the Thomas and Mack Center. UNLV won by seven behind 22 from Terry, and the Rebels have won six of the last seven meetings in this series. What are you looking for tonight? Well, you know one thing is the, the big thing for Utah is they have to be able to play half court against the pressure that UNLV puts on. Because when you have Luke Neville, who has scored 48 points in the two games that they split this year, you know he's a huge factor. You UNLV has the biggest guy they have is going to be up to his chest somewhere. But the question is, is UNLV's pressure going to bother Utah enough where they aren't where they aren't able to enter the ball the way they want to? Well, Luke Neville will come off the bench. Why bring a seven-footer off the bench? The biggest one, hey, as you said, Tom, coming off the bench, seven foot one. It shook him up a little bit. He's playing great. Curtis Terry with the ball in hand for UNLV, and here's Wink Adams. Guarded by Lawrence Bora, who's done a tremendous job against Adams in his career at Utah. Now Terry on the drive and off the glass. We're rolling home. Well, that's one of those plays that might not happen if Luke Neville is standing under the basket, who leads the Mountain West Conference in block shots. But Coach Boylan doesn't want Luke Neville. He was picking up a lot of early fouls. He wanted to stop that by having him watch the first four minutes. Baseline jumper skips off. Scrum for the rebound. They need some help. It will be UNLV basketball. The jumper off the mark for Sean Green. UNLV 24 and 7, 12 and 4 in conference. They drubbed the regular season champs from BYU here at home by 30. Then lost in Provo by 30. Adams can't hit. Green on the glass. Luka Dercha from Serbia feeds it up to Bora. And now the three from Dercha, and he buries it as 14-3 of the season. He doesn't shoot a lot of them. He's one of their weakest three-point shooters. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, shooting over 40%. So that's a big thing that UNLV has to stop them from three-point line. They have a bunch of guys that can bomb from there. Terry at 6'5". Matched up with Dercha. Here's Bailey inside the line. He hits his first shot. Well, one of the amazing things, too, Tom, is that this Utah team has two best two best scorers come off the bench. Johnny Bryant is one of the best three-point shooters in the entire country. He comes off the bench also having 14 a game. Dercha backs it up. Got Rougeau in the air. Now Bora, junior out of Staten Island, working on Bailey. Setting up the pick up high. Kim Tilly with the pick. Dercha feeds Tilly. Fall away shot. Tough angle and it falls. And UNLV is definitely going to want a quick tempo in this game. And they want to put pressure. They force eight. They get eight steals a game. That's how they want this game played. UNLV turns it over, ball to Utah. And head coach Lon Kruger has re-energized his fan base and this team a run to the Sweet 16 last year. And the roster basically turned over when you talk about key players. 
Adams obviously back along with Terry. But they lost his son, Kevin Kruger, who ran the point. They lost their post presence and Asenge and Anthony. And Wendell White, who was a first team all league player. So they lost a lot of guys, and that's why he's coach of the year. They had doubled Tilly and now whistle in a foul off of the drive by Carlin Brown, the freshman from Riverside, California. And the foul will go against Rene Rougeau. And it's like the old days in here, Tom. They've become unbeatable in the Thomas and Mack Center again. They've won 14 straight in this building. That's what you need to have. You need to establish a great home court. They have won 36 of 38 in this building. And remember, that includes a December loss to a really good Arizona team, which was playing great basketball at that time. And had all their guys. They got yeah. a lot of injuries this year. And then they had everybody. Butterfingers that time for Carlin Brown, who watched it go across the sideline after it slipped out of his hands. UNLV trails by one. Brown came off the bench the first four games. He makes his 26th straight start tonight. And Jim Boylan felt like he had to shuffle the lineup. Here's a team after their win yesterday, which has still lost five of its last seven. Off the glass and it falls off. No. Home court roll that time for Rene Rougeau. Well, one of their big problems is time they either make threes or Neville scores inside. They only shoot 15 free throws a game. That is a extremely low number. Last in the Mountain West Conference in free throw attempts. Neville hasn't taken his warm ups off just yet. Still deep down that Utah bench. This is Bora. Cut off by Adams. Try to get it to Green. And the shot clock now at 10. Bora working on Adams. Gave a bump, took a bump. Shot clock under five, jump hook, and Adams pulls it down. Tough shot right there. After the Utah win last night against New Mexico in overtime, Lawrence Bora was asked about his one-on-one -on -one exploits with Wink Adams, and he was reminded, you play pretty well against him. And all Bora could do was let across a smile and admit, yeah, I really do. Because he matches up so well with Adams. And not a whole lot of guys in this conference come with that confidence against Adams. And here's the big seven-footer, Luke Neville. 7'1", 265 out of Perth, Australia. Coming off the bench at the 1609 mark, along with, as you mentioned, Johnny Bryant, the leading scorer off the bench in the nation. Neville brings with him 15 boards, or pardon me, 15 points and seven boards a game. He had 26 last night on 11 of 20 shooting. He went... Man-to-man -man trading baskets with New Mexico's great J.R. Giddens down the stretch, and he had a dunk to put Utah in front. And one of the reasons that they're not starting Neville is Coach Borland has not been happy with his field goal percentage. Last year, he was ninth in the country, 58%. He had not been doing that, but now, since he's been coming off the bench, he's back up to the 58, 59% range coming off the bench. Johnny Bryant's first touch, and he throws it away. The senior out of Oakland has yet to get into the flow. Lon Kruger's team with a strong start in front of the home faithful, but they trail by one. UNLV trails Utah 5-4. to four. four minutes, 10 seconds into this one. And Lon Kruger had a nice run in the postseason last year. Here's how their resume stacks up this season. Key win, the blowout here at home against BYU. A win against New Mexico. They lost on the road to both Air Force and Utah. How does this stack up with everybody else? Well, you know, the big thing they didn't do, they didn't play a lot of teams ranked below 200, and that's why they have a good RPI. And when an RPI that high, there's only one team been left out with a top 30 RPI in the last 15 years, and that was Missouri State twice. So twice, I think it looks pretty good for them. Twice, and Barry Hinson's out of a job thanks to that, by the way. Unfortunately, that is definitely a result of that. Curtis Terry tipped in his own miss. Takes the bump from Dircha. UNLV in front by one. They love to pick and roll with Luke Neville with good shooters. When you pick and roll with a good shooter and a good big man, it's a very difficult thing to defend. Space made for the drive by Dircha. That's simple sometimes. That was a little too simple. That was bad defense by UNLV there. Neville at 7-1, being guarded by Rene Rougeau at 6-6. We'll see how Neville matches up on the other side of the floor, the other end of the floor for Utah. Ford Bailey says clear out. Pick and roll for Terry. Mismatch with Neville. He'll drive by him and in the lane hits a floater. Well designed play. Terry's a big key for this team. When he's played well, they've played well as a team. The weak Adam seems to always play well. Here's Neville with the Duncan one coming. That was a nice catch and a nice finish right there by the big kid. 
watch him running the floor here. He follows Dircher down and makes a good job of catching that ball. And again, the great defensive teams, of which UNLV is one, usually rotate in front of him. Obviously, coming from behind on Neville is not the way you want to come at him. You got to get in front of him and try to intercept that pass before it gets there. Luke Neville, 72 percent from the free throw line, makes it a three-point play. at a game-winning dunk in overtime last night against New Mexico with 22 seconds left. On a pick and roll, they left him open. Well, the big problem for him in this game is he's got to be, now they have him just standing in the lane because who is he guarding on this UNLV team? He's got all, for him, midgets out there at six foot six, six foot seven. So he's got a tough time. And if they pull him away from the basket, that takes away a lot of their defense. So it looks like right now, Coach Boylan has him guarding Shaw and telling him to stand in the middle of the lane. The foul goes against Sean Green. UNLV basketball trailing by two. Now the problem is that Matt Shaw has made 22 threes this year, so he's going to have a chance to shoot some threes tonight, Matt Shaw. Tyler Kipke is into the game for Utah. Now he's way off of Bailey. Terry for three. Had 22 and 10 assists in their last meeting, the last game of the regular season. A near steal by Terry that time, all over Bora. Here's Neville, they bring the double from Terry. Bora for three, got it. See, when you double that low ball, you have a tough decision as a coach to make. You know he's big, you know he can score, you double him. You double him, now you're leaving something alone outside, and when you have a great three-point shooting team like this, that's gonna create a lot of three-point opportunities if they continue to double Neville. Five-point Utah lead. Link Adams gives it up. Here's Bailey over Neville for three. Well, he's going to test him. He's only made nine threes this year, so that's the right guy to leave alone and to put Neville on. Green to Neville. Neville, triple team, and turned it over. His problem came there, Tom, when he decided to bring the ball down. When a seven foot one guy brings the ball down, he becomes six foot one. He's got to be seven one by keeping that ball up in the air. Well, they brought him some help defensively and picked up the assist and, on this play. And look what happens. Terry comes to double, and they don't recover in time, and they knock out the three. That's what throwing the ball to the low post. And the decision Lon Kruger made, which is probably the right one, to double Luke Neville. Utah has hit five of its first seven shots in this one. Here's Rujo walking with it. UNLV had a tough time defending TCU last night. The Horn Frog shot 74% from behind the arc. They went 17 of 23. Never heard of such a thing. And lose. And lost the game. And they run. One thing about Jim Boyle, who's a coach of Tom Izzo, Tom Izzo runs 100 plays. Jim Boyle runs 100 plays. Running hook for Neville. What are you doing with that? Now, if you shoot a running hook at 7-1, you're like 8-1. <laughs> Who's going to stop that? Nobody. Ask Kareem. Kareem Jabbar made his whole career on it. Uh, I'm not comparing with Neville to, to Kareem Jabbar. It wouldn't, Jabbar wouldn't be fair. Wink Adams falling away over Bora. Tough shot. Very physically strong. That's why he's able to shoot that little step back and hang in the air. Tyler Kipke, the junior from Vancouver, the pass first point guard coming off the bench. He and Bora have been running the offense for Utah. Now Bora with the ball, looking for Neville, trying to get an angle, nothing there. They're collapsing on the big guy. Neville, cut off, finds a teammate on the baseline and Tilly hits his second. You know, a team like this, with a big weapon like Luke Neville, if they're playing their game, they can be tough on anybody. Neville has five points, two assists. And remember, he came off the bench. He's only been in there for three minutes. Terry created a tough shot. The follow from Bailey wouldn't fall, and it's brought down by Tilly. Kim Tilly almost lost it. Turns it over now. Terry has it. Terry always looking to push for UNLV. Ball fake for Shaw created a spot. 
See, that's the key for UNLV, Tom. If they don't force turnovers in this game, and this becomes a half-court game, they're in deep trouble. Because the better half-court team is the team with the 7-1 guy who can put the ball in the basket. Utes on a 10-2 run right now. Neville with a pair of assists in that span. And a three-point play. Johnny Bryant gives it up. This is Barr to Neville. Another open three. Kipke misses Neville in there. Adams comes down with it. Here's Wink Adams and a dead sprint off the glass. Now that's what they need to do. If they can make the game go at that speed, then they take over, then they impose their will on Utah. It's really going to be a, a matter of whose will is going to, who's going to be able to impose their will on the other team. Make no mistake, it's a home crowd here at the Thomas and Mack Center. Bora. The follow. Bailey's got it. A rare offensive rebound for Utah. They average about five a game. Rougeau over Neville. They're going to keep shooting over the top, but they haven't made over the top for Neville in a while. When you're small, it's hard to play half court. A lot easier when you got a big guy to throw the ball to on the box in a half court set. Rougeau and Bailey now help from, uh, pardon me, Sean Bailey, then help from Rougeau. How about Neville from the elbow? Misses. Bora got his hands out. Wants the three. Got it! Lawrence Bora has his second three. He was just one for eight from behind the arc coming into Las Vegas. And he has been red hot over the last two games from three-point line. Adams answers. He's not a great three-point shooter, but he's a heck of a player, and he can be one of those guys. He's not a good shooter, but when he shoots it, it goes in. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what happens to good players. 60th three of the season for Wink Adams. He had 29 last night in the UNLV thriller against TCU. Another bucket for Bora. Terry will slow it up for UNLV. A seven-point Utah lead thanks to red-hot shooting. They've hit 60% from the floor, three of five from behind the arc. Terry off the pick from Rougeau. Got Neville out. Rougeau can't hit. Bailey can't follow. It will go to Utah. A breakneck pace to get us going in Las Vegas. And Wink Adams on skates, flying by everybody for the coast-to-coast -coast layup for the Rebels. And then the three again. Well, running Rebels have been tough to beat here at the Thomas and Mack Center, but it's the running Utes on top by seven. 8.33 to go in the first half from Las Vegas. Well, the regular season for Utah wasn't exactly what Jim Boylan had in mind when he took over for Ray Giacoletti. Very similar records. Utah seven and nine in conference play. They come in with a six seed and they came up with an upset win last night against New Mexico in overtime. They were down by nine, nine, five minutes in, they turned it around. They were up seven with 4.36 to go and let the lead slip away against J.R. Giddens and company. And that loss really hurt New Mexico very badly. Bubble burst. Could have. I think that's because everybody losing, they're still alive, but it didn't help for sure. Joe Darger had been on the bench the last few minutes for UNLV. He went straight up on Neville that time. And Kendall Wallace into the game for the Rebels also. Here's Wink Adams. Now Terry. Rougeau will try and drive on Neville. Spin move. Neville didn't lose his feet. Leave his feet. And he comes up with a swan. Why should he leave his feet? There's no reason for him to leave his feet. He can he could have blocked the shot. Just stand there like he just did and block the shot. Neville bumped Wallace. No whistle. Wallace scrapping on the floor. Tied up by Sean Green. The possession arrow points to UNLV. How far for a guy to go when he's 7-1? The reason why Utah's upset in this game is the multiple skills of Luke Neville. Great catch there and a great finish. How about this pass here to the weak side, knocking down that shot? 
makes it more dangerous. And now the sweeping hook right there. This kid can really play on offense. And on defense, he's smart. He holds his ground like he did before and got a block shot. This guy is a tough weapon to defend. And when you're that big and you're that skilled and you're that good a passer, you make your teammates better because of all the attention that you draw in the low, in the low post creates all kinds of openings so that when this team is shooting well, they're tough. Well, there was one team that kind of went against the grain when dealing with Luke Neville this year. Wyoming, which finished eight in this eighth in this ninth team conference, never doubled Luke Neville. They had let him have 22 and 16. They took away his help from his other teammates and they swept Utah. It's a legitimate way to go. He got a 40% three-point shooting team. Let him make all the twos that he wants and stop the three-point shooters. That is a legitimate way to go to go about playing them. Neville looks for position. They go behind him this time, and the layup is off the mark. Garger with the board. Carlin Brown, the freshman, missed it inside. Here's Wink Adams. I think one of the difficult things for UNLV is Rougeau is much smaller, but he's not a three-point shooter, so he... This oh, guy is... My, with a hand in his face. Adams with two threes tonight. UNLV has made a three in 717 straight games. They've made a three in every game since that line was put on the floor, even dating before the NCAA adopted it when the Big West experimented with it. That is obviously the longest streak in the nation. Adams has them both. Now Neville, Terry, rebound. Neville tied him up. Bad foul right there. That's a shame they call a foul on him there. He really should have just backed away. Once that ball got pulled away, he doesn't want to pick up fouls like that. That kind of guy, he's got to pick up his fouls on offensive rebounds and on the defensive end trying to block shots, and that's it. Wink Adams has 10 points for UNLV. He's hit his last two threes. That foul by Neville, just the fourth foul whistled in this game combined. Two for each side. Adams crosses over, gets in the lane, looking for Wallace, the three, and Neville hauls it in. That was a good pass, wide open three by Wallace. He's got to knock that one down. Luka Dercha, the sophomore from Bel Belgrade, Serbia, played on the Serbian Amateur League a couple years ago. His father was his basketball coach growing up. And Brian got cut off and backs it out. They love to pick and roll in the middle of the floor, Tom. Very difficult to guard that. Rick Adams with the rebound. He averages four boards a game. Not bad for a guy who admits the six-foot listing is too much. He's about 5'10". Wallace in the paint. Now Rougeau from the line. Rougeau follows his miss. Well, that time, bad shot. When I say bad shot, he was open, but it wasn't close. And he just followed it up, and Neville was standing around. I think Neville's a little tired right now. I think it's time for him to get a blow. The lead has been dwindled to two. Last year, Neville played 44 minutes in their game here against UNLV in the regular season. He sat for the first four tonight. Lost it inside. Same thing, Tom. He put it down on the floor, made himself small again. Shot clock winding down. Wink Adams, another board. Three on three. Adams changed his mind. He's going to go after all, and he's blocked by Green. Great defense by Green there. Johnny Bryant stops and pops. Adams, another rebound. Curtis Terry just beat the 10 second count, didn't he? Just beat it. Got the call from Lon Kruger on the sideline. And look how Neville's playing Rougeau. He's staying way off him, and he still took it out of the score. Four points for the junior from Rancho, Cucamonga, California. Brown, the freshman. Guarded hard by Rougeau. Neville goes strong, a charge against oh, the big guy. That's a tough one. His second. second. Foul. sub at the table for him the whole time, but the action here has been non-stop. There hasn't been a lot of fouls, and nobody rotates there, and that's a charge. Great play by Darger there to get in front of him. 
And obviously, if you're 7-1 like that, it's hard to control yourself when you're in the air, and he just was going to barrel into him right there. Does that completely change what Utah does now for the next, the last four minutes? You know, of the for the last four minutes, they got to keep him out because it's too easy for him to pick up a third five because he can't move laterally that well. So keeping him out, you know, if they could just hang on here, keep it tight, or go down a couple, I think they'll have bought some time. New game plan, you would assume, without Neville in there. It's completely different. Green, another block. That time it gets darker. Shot clock at five. Wallace looks at the clock. Thought about a deep one. Throws it off with contact. And a shot clock violation. What a start here at the Thomas and Mack Center. Jim Boylan's troops fired up with Neville on the bench for the rest of the half. We're all tied. Hey everyone, Adam Zucker in New York. Coming up at halftime, the latest on a reported tornado ripping through downtown Atlanta and postponing action at the SEC quarterfinals. A score for you right now from the Pac-10. Stanford up by fourth the half on Washington State. Winner faces UCLA. Tom and Steve. All right, thanks, Adam. Tied at 22 here. Register to play the CSTV Bracket Challenge delivered by UPS at CSTV.com slash bracket. It's your chance to win a free trip to the college game of your choice. UPS, what can Brown do for you? The UNLV band full force here at this media timeout. They won 12 in a row here. They won 36 of 38 here in this building. This is as lively a building as you will find, I think, in college basketball. It is a great home court. It was obviously a great home court in the early 90s, too. And Lon Kruger has really brought it back with, and beginning with the defense. That's how he does it. They say players make the coach. Players also make the court. Absolutely. Hey, they talk about Cameron Indoor Stadium. It's a great home court. So the guys wearing those uniforms. Terry is short on his threes. The 10 2 UNLV run. Helping to tie this game. Garland Brown gives it up. This is Luka Dercha. Dercha has really struggled behind the arc. Just two of 18 shooting threes over the last eight games, even though he hit his first tonight. Tilly with drive. Spins and puts it off the window. And even Tilly is much bigger, really, than everybody on you all know. He's got a couple inches on everybody there, and they let him come back to that shoulder there, and he dropped a little jump hook in. Tilly, 6'9", 220. Darger is the tallest at 6'7", and he can shoot it. Tallest for UNLV at 6'7". They've done a great job on Darger so far. He hasn't gotten many good looks in this game. Joe Darger, 0 for 2 from the floor. Fair rebounds for UNLV. Luke Adams leads all scores with 10, but he's on the bench right now. Officials confused on the call. It will be UNLV basketball right in front of the Rebel bench. They did a great job on that trap and that guy. He goes to the corner. The worst thing you can do against UNLV is go to the corner and stop your dribble. Now you're really stuck. And they did a great job of trapping him, not allowing him out of the trap, and stepping up to the next outlet man. Wink Adams returns. Utah leads by two. Adams, if you're just joining us, hit the game winner with 3.4 seconds left. Last night against TCU, an 89-88 UNLV win. It was a three-point play. He hit the free throw for the victory. Shaw misses the three. Green fouled by Darger on the rebound. It's the first on the junior Joe Darger. Coming up at halftime on Game Room, Adam Zucker and Brian Curtis will have highlights from our first game, as well as scores and highlights from around the country, and an update from Atlanta, Georgia, with a suspended play at the Southeastern Conference Tournament. Dercha looking for Tilly. This is Johnny Bryant, the senior from Oakland. Gives it up to Dercha. And he hasn't gotten many looks at it either, Johnny Bryant. Bora. Foul inside is going to go against Kim Tilly. He started five games straight now. It's the first on the sophomore from France, Tilly. An international team, isn't it? Very much so. But you know, in this game so far, they're 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 up by two. They've gotten zero from Johnny Bryant. They've gotten only five from Luke Never. They're doing a pretty good job in this game defensively on UNLV. Shaw will drive. Serbia, Canada, Australia, and France well represented 
on this Utah team. Plenty of pass points. Terry hits from deep. He is such a streaky three-point shooter, and he can make and take very tough ones when he's going good. Hit his first four threes in the home win against BYU this year. He went for 22 in his last meeting with Utah. Dercha picks it up from behind the line. Shot clock at 10. Dercha leans in and he's off the mark. Tried to draw the foul there. He gave him a little shot fake but couldn't get it. Terry will cross midcourt, get a timeout with 13 seconds left. What a half we've had already at the Thomas and Mack Center. And UNLV up by one. Lon Kruger had a tremendous run with his son at the point for UNLV last year. First round against Georgia Tech. Michael Ume with the drive and the bucket. He finished with 19. Joel Anthony swatted away Javaris Trenton in the closing seconds. It was the first turning win for UNLV since the Final Four season of 91. Then it was Kevin Kruger knocking out the two seed Wisconsin. A Kevin Kruger special, the four point play, and the coach's son, the one year transfer from Arizona State, helps him to the Sweet 16. And you know, in the next game time, they get Oregon. Oregon is a, is a great perimeter team with Tawan Porter, Aaron Brooks, and what happened was they couldn't pressure them into the mistakes they were able to pressure Georgia Tech and Wisconsin into, and that's why they lost that game. So a lot of this stuff is matchups. If they play against a really good perimeter team that can control the tempo, it's tough because they rely on turnovers and they rely on forcing the team out of their style of play. Shot clock off. Dogger gives it to Adams with the game winner last night. We approach the half. And Terry for three in and out. Green tried to get to it. And Tilly has a chance at the buzzer. Just wide. Time to catch our collective breath. It's a one-point game, and it might just be in the 20s, but it felt like a barn burner here at the Thomas and Mack Center for the first 20 minutes. Now, let's send it to the CSTV Fieldhouse for game room. Two seed UNLV holding on to a slim advantage against the six seed Utah running Utes. Sports side alongside Steve Lapis, I'm Tom Hart. What a thriller through the first 20 minutes. What another great test for a team that you think is tournament bound. UNLV, they got a great one last night from TCU. They're getting all they can handle tonight from Utah. Well, you know, they haven't been able to turn this Utah team over. And they're lucky that Luke Neville only played 12 minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. If this thing stays in a half court situation, you got to like Utah's chances between the three point shooters and Luke Neville, that's a lot that they can do to win this game. On the other hand, you have UNLV. They've got to get this game more in transition so they can get to the, more to their liking. All right, well, the tournament selection show is coming up Sunday night on CBS. Let's take a look at your selections in your Sweet 16. Who do you like coming in well, to this weekend? The number one seeds are very easy. The twos aren't that hard. When you get to the three and four line, all kinds of crazy things have been happening. Louisville ended up losing the Big East tournament. UConn lost. But look at the people behind them that you put it Xavier was in here before they lost tonight to St. Joe's I think what it shows is I believe there's only six or seven teams capable of winning the national title and I think they're in the first two lines and that's it it's not one of those years where there's 20 teams or 15 teams like people say I don't think the balance is so great I think we have four or six great teams and that's what we have well that's not the only selection show Sunday night on CBS you'll also take part on CBS College Sports. In fact, starting Sunday, CSTV joining forces with CBS Sports to become the CBS College Sports Network. It's all the same action, all the same passion with a brand new look. The CBS College Sports Network, the new pulse of college sports. Speaking of this Utah team, it was 10 years ago this season where Rick Majerus led the Utes to, by the way, San Antonio for the Final Four. Jim Boylan is all of a sudden a game and a half from getting 
this crazy Utah team into the NCAA tournament. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of bubble teams that are rooting hard for these guys to lose tonight. They don't want it to get come down to tomorrow night. I guarantee you the coaches at Ohio State, UMass, Villanova that are watching this course say, get these guys out of there right now. This Utah team has lost five of its last seven. Escaped in overtime against New Mexico last night. And perhaps uh, those bubble teams can be thankful towards Utah because they may have taken Steve Alford's Lobos out of the tournament. Well, and they were always on the bubble. Though. I don't know if they were ever a lot, but they were close. And they still might be the way this thing has come down. The Rebels run and Rujo off the mark. Rebounded by Carlin Brown. Utah defensively six blocks in the first half. Three each for Neville and Green. Those each tie career highs and now Green misses his three. Tilly was over the back and Kim Tilly quickly uh, quickly picks up his second. Well they got to go to the glass a little bit. This is a poor offensive rebounding team Utah. So at least they got to try because it's not they're not even shooting well. They're 10 for 25 in the first half and they are the 17th best field goal percentage team in the country. So if they want to get some other opportunities they don't turn people over. They got to get to the offensive glass a little bit more. Utah held New Mexico to just four offensive rebounds last night. It shouldn't have been too big a surprise. The six seed has beaten the three seed for four straight years now here in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Terry baseline reverses it. That was some poor defense on the ball, which is where it started. It's a poor help. Luca Dercha, guarded by Bailey, gets the pick from Tilly. Well, pop it himself and buries. Dorcher looks like a shooter tonight. I know he hasn't shot well this year. He's an assist guy, one of the top assist guys in the league, but that shot looked pretty good to me. Coming into tonight, he had really been struggling from behind the arc. Three of eight, two of 18, I should say, over the last eight games. Another on Tilly. He cannot believe it in any language. Well, that was a travel right there by Bailey before the foul. You could see him move his pivot foot clear as day as he gave the shot fake there. So Tilly picks up consecutive fouls in the first minute and a half of the second half. And it puts Corey Bailey, a 27-year-old senior from Tampa, Florida, on the line for UNLV. Bailey got out of high school, went to work for his dad's air conditioning company. A coach found him, ended up at Butler County Community College, and here he is in his second season with UNLV. He started seven games last year. He's been in the starting lineup a good chunk of this season for Lon Cruz. And he's become a very important player for them, which I'm sure they didn't expect. Tilly playing with three fouls has the screen gets the feed from Dircha Tilly strong move foul by Darger on the floor it's the second on the junior from Riverton Utah Joe Darger and Tilly scoring just five points a game for a guy who doesn't score that much he's really been aggressive offensively really from the beginning of this game. Here's a steal by Bailey. Green saved it off of Bailey's leg. It will stick with Utah. Great play by Green there. That was going off of the Utah team. And Green just made a great hustle play to throw it back in. It looked like uh, Bailey was going to make a steal there. And now that ball's going out. And he hustles to get that thing back and throw it off Bailey. Great play. That's why you never give up on a play, Tom. And there's the guys that don't are the guys you like. Count it for Neville. Off the bench with the bucket and a free throw coming. That was an old-fashioned pick and roll there. He rolled to the basket right there, made a nice catch. And let me tell you, a pretty good finish with 11. This is it. He slipped the screen, didn't set the pick and roll. What happens when a good shooter is using a big guy who can play like that as his screen, his man has a tendency to be ready to pop out on the shooter. Neville slipped to the basket, and that's why he was so open there. You've talked about their pick and rolls at the middle of the floor. Is that a tougher entry pass than from the wing? It's not even so much that it's a 
a tougher pass time is there's no help. If you're in the middle of the floor, there's no weak side. And that's the big thing about playing in the middle of the floor. Rougeau tries to go over the top of Neville. If had they, three blocks in the first if half. If they set that pick and roll on the side, now whoever's on the other side of the floor can give help. But if it's in the middle, you can't do that. Rougeau got his hands on it. And Dercha blocks him from getting to the loose ball. Rene Rougeau playing with some passion in front of the home crowd here at UNLV. Wanted that steal. It's a good thing that's a cushioned table. <laughs> Could have broke his hand. Joe, a former walk-on, coming out of Etiwanda High School, played with Darren Collison at UCLA. Two others went on to the Division I scholarships. Here's Adams. Stops, pops, drops. Weak Adams hits another tough one, and he's got a dozen. He's so strong that he really has that step back shot down pat. Rebels by three. Three minutes into the second half. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight from Las Vegas. BYU won the first semifinal. They're in the championship game for the second straight year. Luke Neville at 7-1, spins into Rougeau, and that's a foul against UNLV in the home crowd, not so short. I thought that time, Tom, the double team came a little late and allowed him to make his initial move. And once somebody that big does that, it's a problem. No problem for Wink Adams when you've got a guy like this. Well, look at this play here. That's a step back, and he stepped back a good three feet, and that is all, obviously, the ability to make the shot, but there's physical strength involved in that one. Luke Neville at the free throw line. As a second one coming, Darger takes his seat with three fouls now for UNLV, and he's replaced by Matt Shaw. The Utah coaching staff under Rick Majerus was recruiting Luke Neville to come stateside and join another pretty good Australian they had at the time by the name of Andrew Bogut. But when Rick Majerus stepped away from the program, the letters quit coming. Ray Giacoletti came in and ended up finding Neville for the second time, kind of on a lark. Wink Adams went strong to the glass. And Neville did a decent job that time, at least staying with Wink Adams. And good Neville. Pass. Nice touch. Classic early offense. Neville ran down the middle of the floor and parked himself right under the rim in transition. The UNLV couldn't get around. They threw it too many. Laid it in the basket. Good job by Luke Neville positioning himself. Luke Neville was playing stateside in Marietta, Georgia as a foreign exchange student. Here's Rougeau off the glass. And Ray Giacoletti called down to the Australian Institute of Sport looking for a coach to help him with the big Australian he had and trying to determine if he should turn pro. They said, we got another guy that's pretty good that's playing in Atlanta by the name of Luke Neville. You might like him. Well, look oh, at they this. like him a lot. Look at this Neville right here. He does a good job here staying with him defensively. Gets this one back out, and here comes a nice finish. Welcome back to New York. A quick update on the situation down in Atlanta with the SEC tournament and severe weather. Raycom Sports has told CSTV that the games tomorrow in the SEC tournament, including Georgia versus Kentucky, will be moved to Georgia Tech's facility, which holds just over 9,000 people. Severe weather is also expected tomorrow. Now back to Tom and Steve. What a, all right, thanks, Brian. What a crazy situation in Atlanta. The very least of their worries is that they're trying to move all those tickets on the campus at Georgia Tech, a very small facility. But how about the fact that somebody's going to have to play a doubleheader tomorrow? That's a, this is not baseball. Kentucky, Where's Ernie Banks? Kentucky and Georgia apparently will play their game that was suspended tonight and then have to come back and play tomorrow night. And by the way, you got to get everybody in and off of Georgia Tech's campus instead of playing at the Dome. What a nutty situation. I assume the Phillips Arena is booked. It must be a Hawks game, a reason they can't get our concert. They can't get into Phillips Arena. Neville, the shot clock winding down, is off the mark. Can you imagine that as a coach? It's tough enough to get in. Now, all of a sudden, you might have to play two in one day. Tom, it was hard enough playing back-to-back -back days, let alone two in one. Are you doing a scouting report? I mean, that, talk about creating all new things. Remember earlier this season in the NBA, the Hawks and the Heat had to finish 51 seconds from a protested game and play two. That was just an extra minute. Yeah. Here's Terry off the curl, and he buries it. 
Nice offensive play there. He caught that with the with his and the right left. When he's going to your left, you have to right left when you catch the ball with your feet, and that's how you're in rhythm, and that's what Terry did there. He's marched his way to 14 points tonight. Had 22 in their last meeting. The lob to Neville was off the mark, and they're going to get a hold inside on a ball that would have been thrown away. Shaw with the foul. But on the other side, it was the senior Curtis Terry coming off the curve. He caught this. He was ready to shoot that when he caught it. That's why the Utah team defensively couldn't catch up to him. He is ready before he caught the ball. That's called being shot ready, and that's when you make the shot, when you're ready to shoot it before you catch it. Tyler Kipke, the junior from Vancouver, British Columbia, into the game for Utah. Green, long pass into Neville. Lawrence Moore has been quiet in the second half. Here's Bryant. Got it! Johnny Bryant's first bucket of the night. 14 point score, scores his first one. And again, where did the ball go at one point in time? It went inside. When the ball goes inside first, it ends up, even maybe not on the first pass out, but at some point it's going to create an opportunity for a shot. Get it inside first, and that's what Utah's doing. Rebels by one. Both teams three point shooting heating up now. Adams off the front rim. Here's Johnny Bryant pushing it for Utah. Neville got down the court quickly. Green. And Neville knocks it out of bounds. You made a great point there, Tom. Neville ran the floor really hard on that play there. This call is going to go against UNLV. The officials will get together. Initially, it was against UNLV. And we'll give you a look at home. Well, I thought Neville hit this ball out. That's pretty close. A lot closer than I thought. That's not that obvious there. It really looks like an over the back, but when Neville's 7-1 going up against a guy 6-6, may not have been. Yeah, it may not. I don't, I don't think it was over. How about Terry there? Register to play the CSTV Bracket Challenge delivered by UPS at CSTV.com slash bracket for a chance to win a free trip to the college game of your choice. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Curtis Terry is a volatile player. He might blow up for four threes from 30 feet. He also might dribble one off his foot as he did just a moment ago. Here's a trap in the corner. Kipke has it stolen away. Rougeau wasn't ready, and now Utah has numbers. Kipke for three. But you know why Rougeau wasn't ready, Tom? Because they don't not supposed to outlet the ball to him. That was the passer's fault in that situation, not Rougeau's. He was running the floor like he's supposed to. He's not leading the break. Seven minutes into the second half at the Thomas and Mack Center, and we have a thriller. Terry to Rougeau. Loose ball. Picked up by Tilly, who's playing with three fouls. Terry Gamble couldn't get the steal. Kept K looking for back-to-back. -back. UNLV basketball. Rick Adams says, let's slow it down and value this possession. He didn't want Rougeau dribbling that ball much longer. Utah needed overtime to upset New Mexico late last night. UNLV snuck by TCU on a game winner from Wink Adams. Here's Wink again. And Neville draws a foul on Rougeau, went over the back for his second foul. Great rebound by Neville there, Tom. I'll tell you why, because he went for that ball. That wasn't a ball that came to him. He went and got that ball. That was a very good rebound right there. Watch Luke Neville here. This ball's coming off, and he has to go get it. He was outside the lane. He got to the middle of the lane. Good job there by Neville. Luke Neville with 11 points tonight. Three blocks in the first half for Neville. And five boards on the night. Tyler Kipke gives it up to Johnny Bryant. Transferred from Olone College in California. And Tilly for three. Boy, shot that with a lot of confidence. Boy, they just have had a couple of really... Kipke had an open look. Tilly had an open look. This is normally a team that 40% from three, one of the best in the nation. Kendall Wallace, Santa Mesa, Arizona, into the game for UNLV. Von Kruger being held back by the official. He was out on the court. Rujo crosses over. Tries to spin on Neville. Nowhere to go. The three... Got it! Matt Shaw's 
Matt's first bucket. Boy, Matt Shaw shot that like a shooter. Rebels by one. Kepke on Wallace. The good pressure on the ball stopped Tilly from being able to throw that ball into Neville there. Rougeau hauls it in. Terry, no numbers. Curtis Terry, half-brother of former Arizona State out Jason Terry, now with the Mavericks. And here's Wink Adams, left it for Wallace. Rougeau trying to decide what to do against Neville. How about Shaw again? That was doubted out. Mother Nature blew the roof off of the Georgia Dome tonight. It would have been the UNLV faithful blowing it off the Thomas and Mack Center had Shaw hit back to back. I think Utah needs to get this pace back down a little bit. It's got kind of hectic there for a couple of minutes. They're better off in the half court. Better be hectic at home than on the road, huh? Absolutely. At home, it's okay. On the road, tough. Kepke with the drive. Tilly has it in his hands. Johnny Bryant buries it. He buries him. Two threes in the second half for Johnny Bryant. That was one of those ones, Tom, I was, when I saw it go back to him, I knew he was making that three there. Wink Adams guarded now by Carlin Brown, the freshman, doubled by Tilly. Ten on the shot clock. Terry gets a high pick from Shaw. Rougeau, touch pass. Shaw lost it. Shot clock winding down. Terry. What do you say, Curtis Terry? This guy, I, every time I see him, he misses the easy ones. He makes the tough ones. That was deep. They needed it. It was off a bobbled ball, and he knocks it down. He dribbles it off his foot. He hits a 22 foot. He's unbelievable. Johnny Bryan again. In and out. Knocked out by Tilly. And Terry playing leapfrog with the photographer is not so happy to see that big guy coming over the top. It'll be UNLV basketball. Jim Boylan is boiling over here for Utah. Thanks in large part to this deep three from Terry. UNLV leads Utah by one. Every possession matters in this one, and that's why Jim Boylan is so fired up for the Utah Utes. Well, I really thought here, Tom, was a bad call. They neither, and this is a good refereeing group. Neither referee knew what happened. They, nobody made an initial call. So when they huddled together, I don't understand what they based their decision on. If they had a decision, somebody would have made a call when it first went out of bounds. So I'm not, and this, like I said, this is a very good crew. They've done a very good job tonight, but I think there, that was a little bit of guesswork. The ball was knocked out of bounds. Initially, the official on the baseline said white indicating white ball and it's obviously a tough call unless you say Terry was on the baseline and stepped on the line with the ball in hand it, it makes it a lot easier if it's a tough call fine but you know you then you can't guess you know what I mean go to the arrow that's it call the jump ball go to the arrow and at least do it like that but don't guess it Wink Adams so strong leaves it for Rougeau Dogger can hit this one Rougeau on the glass. That was a stolen rebound right there. Rougeau just came in and stole that one. Joe Dogger is scoreless tonight. A 58% three-point shooter. He's had a couple of different looks. But is 0 for 2 from behind the line. 0 for 3 from the floor. Wink Adams with the left. When he gets to the rim, he's tough because he can finish. He's so strong. He can use both hands. Great play by Wink Adams. Kendall Wallace picks up Kip K, full court. Here's the pickup top from Bryant. Now they get the switch they wanted. Wallace on Bryant. Now they're working on the 6-7 dogger. Look at the height advantage. 
pushed him away. He allowed, yeah, he allowed, Gardner did a good job pushing him away, but Neville didn't try to fight him at all. You gotta fight back a little bit when that guy's pushing you off the block. He ended up taking a 12-foot hook. A bump on the screen. It'll go against Utah on Brown. But how about Wink Adams from behind the arc, from in the paint, up across the glass, whatever you want, he's got it. Just about every college basketball conference has a postseason tournament. No other conference has Las Vegas, though. And what we have tonight in the Thomas and Mack Center, what they had last night, makes you wonder why anybody outside of the coaches would want this tournament to be played anywhere else. I think Jim Gordon right now would rather be on a neutral court. I think Neil Gordon might say the same thing last night. Maybe we'll go over there now with a microphone and ask, hey, Jim, would you, what would you rather be playing this here or the neutral court somewhere? An incredible atmosphere here at the Thomas and Mack Center, taking up a few decibels when they're playing Viva Las Vegas and the Rebels are on the floor, and we're just steps from the strip. They can put any sticker they want in half court, Tom. This is the Thomas and Mack Center. That doesn't change. Not only did they peel Jerry Tarkanian court off the floor for this week, they took down all of the banners, the retired jerseys. They put up a wall around the court because last year the UNLV students stormed the court after the win against BYU. Rene Rougeau working on the seven-foot center. What a move. It's like putting a mask on a model and saying she's not a model anymore. <laughs> Rebels by five. Largest lead of the night for UNLV. They're in the danger zone right now, Utah. Great move there. That is a big time pro move. He went to his left, spun back at 7-1 and put it in with his left hand. Pro move. A Baker's dozen now for Luke Neville. Out of Perth, Australia, played high school ball at Tell High School in Marietta, Georgia, in Atlanta suburbs. Now they pull him out. And Rujo hustles his way to another bucket. He just got, that was totally Neville out quick, out hustled to the ball there. He should have had that rebound. Dercha gets fouled by Kendall Wallace on the drive. It's the first foul on Wallace. Wallace missed the first month of the season. Due to a stress fracture. Rougeau missed the shot, didn't miss the second. No, Neville just stood and initially got his hand up and he turned and looked at the rim instead of going, and that's when he went by him, Rougeau, and stole that rebound. Corey Bailey returns to the lineup for UNLV as Wallace takes a seat. Rebels by five. You said during the break that Neville needs a touch every time down the floor. He need, he, why not Why not start your offense with a good passer eight feet from the basket? You've got to throw it to him every time. Even if he doesn't shoot it every time, throw it to him. Good ball pressure by Terry. Now Neville on the 6-7 target. Dercha. Great ball handling skills and Rougeau fouls him. Great move by Dercha there going behind his back at the right time. It's the third foul at Rene Rougeau and Luca Dercha. We'll go to the line. He does a good job going behind his back when Terry was leaning the other way. That's a foul. Took it to the basket strong with the left hand. But again, I can't emphasize enough. How did the offense start? They got the ball into Neville one time. That changes everything for the rest of the possession. Throw it to him initially, make the defense react, and now you'll get something down the road. You know, Jim Boylan spent 13 years in the NBA, 11 of those with the Rockets. Back-to-back -back NBA titles. A lot of transfers from the pro game to the college game. And especially the way Tom Izzo and Jim Boyle like to play. These guys love multiple offensive sets. He runs like somebody, uh, my, my assistant Chris Walker's in New Mexico, he's a coach. They run 100 plays. But I got this dude, Scott, report. Drives me nuts. I got to watch like 100 tapes. Dercha hits them both. Three-point game now, 17 fouls against UNLV. Utah will be shooting from the free throw line the rest of the way. Jim Boylan cut his teeth as a coach under legendary Michigan State coach Judd Heathcote back in the late 80s, early 90s. Dogger trying to get off to Schneid. Friendly roll, they want to check and see if it's a three. That's a first make tonight for Joe Dogger. 
and they'll go to the monitor. He got the home bounce there, Tom. To the naked eye, I didn't think he was 19-9. I thought he was just had the toe on the line, but we'll give you a shot at home. And you get a look. Can't see it really there. You could see the official hesitated because he couldn't get a look. That right arm started to come up. Did any official make a call no, initially? In fact, were they guessing again? That's not a three. This was. That's the angle. And Steve, this is the complaint that everybody has when it comes to an instant replay that a call won't be made. And it's tough to reverse a call if you don't make a call. Some, that's, that's, that's what we were talking about. Somebody's got to make a call. Now, if it's wrong, you reverse it. That's fine. But somebody's got to make a call there, whether it's three, two, whatever it is. Somebody's got to say something. It's tough. So what happens? If, if they deem this to be, you know, not irrefutable evidence, okay, you're not supposed to change the call. What's the call? That's right. There's no, no call has been made. The arm didn't go up. The arm was out to the side. So you could argue, well, if the right arm wasn't up, it wasn't called a three initially, then it wasn't a three. But uh, So what does this tell you? A whole bucket of nothing. In fact, I'm not sure what they put on the scoreboard, either a two or a three. How about Utah, though? Regardless, with 5.28 to go, the sixth seed... Bounce New Mexico last night in overtime. They've got UNLV on the ropes, and Jim Boylan's team is five and a half minutes away from taking on their arch rivals tomorrow night here in Las Vegas with a chance to go to the tournament. Well, Jim Boylan has done an excellent job in this game, imposing their will, making it a half court game, and making sure Luke Neville was involved, even if he's not, he only has 12 points. But he's involved by touching the ball in every possession. I think he's done a great job. All right, it's a two for Joe Darger, his first bucket of the night. Von Kruger says, you took a look. That's all you can do. It's a five-point UNLV lead. Five and a half minutes to go. Utah trails. Johnny Bryan averages 14. He's got six tonight. He was held scoreless in the first half. Bryant will drive. Leaves it for Bora. Bora almost lost it. May have doubled. But head fake steps inside and drops it. I'll tell you, Tom, when you're a good shooter, when you shot fake, it is a lethal play because people have to leave their feet and respect your shot fake because they think you're going to shoot the ball. All right, it's a three-point game right now. Jim Boylan uses the timeout. We'll discuss what he may be discussing when we come back to Las Vegas. The two-seed UNLV on top of the six-seed Utah, 50-47 to 47 in our second semifinal of the night. Take a look at the Mountain West Conference Championships bracket. And BYU has earned a berth in the title game, got by Colorado State, and then earlier tonight by the Aztecs of San Diego State. UNLV and Utah both had absolute thrillers last night. The Utes in overtime, the UNLV after a game winner with three seconds left from Wink Adams. Here they are tonight, playing for a right to play BYU, which will be the home team tomorrow night, and it's come down to the final five minutes. Wink Adams almost has it stolen away by Luka Dercher. Wink Adams had 10 in the first half, only four here in the second. Kim Tillion. The drive. And it falls out. Adams will be at the free throw line, and he's helped to his feet by his teammates. One thing that he does a great job of is attacking guys, especially when he feels a mismatch. They switch the screen there. He felt he had a mismatch there, and he was taking him to the basket. Green had a shot there, I think, to take a charge, too. He went up, he should have just stood his ground. If he had another, if he had moved six inches to his left, he'd have had a charge there on Wink Adams. First trip to the free throw line tonight for Wink Adams, who won it from the line last night after he tied it with a leaner with 3.4 seconds left. Luke Neville returns for Utah. Neville with 13 points, five boards, 
two assists. Adams, an 85% shooter from the free throw line. It's one of two. UNLV showing pressure. Picking up a little bit further up than they have the entire game. They were picking up at half court most of the game. Bailey on Dircha, what does that do to the Utah offense? Well, make them start out a little bit further out and not be able to enter the ball so easily, maybe, to Luke Neville. Bryant has Neville if he wants it. He'll take it himself. Tough angle. Bailey pulls it down. Tough shot there. Link Adams. Finds Bailey nowhere to go. Right now, this Utah team has to play great half-court defense and not allow this UNLV team to get to the basket. Adams guarded by Bohr. Got a screen from Bailey. Bailey gets it back, loses it. Shot clock running out on him, and he just gets it off. And he, they say it was a shot clock violation. He got it off but didn't hit the rim. 3.36 to go from Las Vegas in this one coming down to the wire. The Phillips 66 Mountain West Conference Basketball Championships on CSTV is brought to you by Phillips 66, hardworking gas. By Sirius Satellite Radio, hear what you've been missing on Sirius, the best radio on radio. And by State Farm, who is proud to offer great rates and great service 24-7. In a city that's open 24-7, UNLV leading Utah 51 to 47, 336 to go. You mentioned a moment ago that Utah's having trouble defensively trying to get in front of guys like Wink Adams. Yeah, they're having trouble guarding in the half court now. Guys going off the dribble like Wink, Curtis, Terry. Right now, though, on the offensive end, they need to get the ball into Luke Neville. They need a basket here. They're down four. Get it to Neville. Start the offense with him, even if he doesn't shoot it. They got to double him. It's going to create some other opportunity down the line in the possession. The offense backed up all the way to midcourt, and now Jim Boylan has to burn a timeout. And here's what's happening, too. UNLV picking up much further up now, Tom, we've noticed. And what's that doing? It's not allowing Utah to get into their offense in a normal place 25 feet from the basket. Now they're trying to start their offense 35 feet from the basket. That is a huge difference. Now the big dance is just a week away. Go to CSTV.com slash Cinderella to get the latest on all the potential sleepers. They backed him up like the strip on a Friday night. Just in what happened? Why did Johnny Bryant pick up his dribble at midcourt? Well, that's obviously a mistake right there. You can never pick up your dribble, especially against a team that's putting that kind of pressure on you because they're just going to continue to come after you. I mean, he was five feet from half court. They got to get the ball in deep, maybe make a move to get by somebody and flatten out the defense and then throw the ball into Luke Neville. 321 to go. The possession error belongs to UNLV. Utah has been in the one and one, but they haven't gotten there. They've only shot six free throws on the night. Shot clock at 10. Tough to get it to Neville when it's winding down. It's off of his hands. Got a hurry. Five. Sean Green to the baseline. Leans in. Tracks down his own miss. Fresh 35. Bryant took a bump, no whistle, to the baseline where he gets it. That was a great shot. Again, you're a lethal shooter. You shot fake. They jump, run by you. You go the other way. You knock it down. The Utes need a stop. This is a tough matchup here now with Green on Curtis Terry. The long week Adams to get it on the wing. Ujo sheds Bora. Now Garger still hasn't hit from behind the arc. Rujo saves another. That's Luke Neville's biggest problem. He's not a great rebounder. He gets beat to the ball. The quickness hurts him. And again, that's exactly what happened there. He had position, ran around him, got the rebound. Tenth rebound of the night for Rene Rujo. His fifth offensive rebound for UNLV. Rebels use a timeout. 23 on the shot clock, leading by two. 
Well, UNLV is likely off the bubble thanks to a big win last night as they continue. Who else are some of your bubble teams that are worrying and how long could your list be? Let me tell you, first of all, of, of these six teams, any one of these six or all of these six could make it <laughs> because there's that many teams right now that are on the bubble. So you look in this situation, Arizona State probably with the best wins overall of this group. Ohio State beat Michigan State and Purdue the last week of the season. We thought it was enough. Then they go and lose to Michigan State yesterday. So Villanova loses to Georgetown the Big East tournament. I'm telling you, no one has any idea what's going to happen with these teams. I think of all those teams, Arizona State has the best profile because I think they have the best wins. And what I learned when I went to uh, uh, selection camp, that we call it selection camp, was that it's all about who you beat and who you lost. Doesn't hurt that Arizona State's coming out of a uh, nice conference this year. Great conference. And you know, their RPI is not great, but they have good wins on their schedule. Their out of conference schedule is not that good, and that's why their RPI is down a little bit, but they still beat some good teams. Curtis Terry will pull the trigger. We approach a two-minute mark here at the Thomas and Mack Center. These teams fighting for a right to play for the title tomorrow against regular season champ BYU. Well, they're going to just clear this thing out, pick and roll, and go with Wink Adams. Shot clock at nine. Adams, guarded by Dercha, gets a pick from Rougeau. Maybe an illegal screen. Adams off the mark. Rougeau's got his sixth offensive rebound of the night. I'll tell you, he plays hard, Rougeau, and he tracks down these long rebounds, and that's what he's done the entire game. Curtis Terry hounded by Bryant. Dercha gets whistled for the foul on Wink Adams. Well, that's all right. That's a good. They got a few to give, so they have to. You, you want to at least be within one of the one and one in case you do have to foul without wasting time. And now they go to the line because you don't want to be sitting there and have to foul multiple times and end up they end up chewing up a lot of the clock. Luke Neville takes a break. Well, Neville two fouls. Well, they they know they're going off the dribble now, and he's not the right guy to have out there if you have to guard people off the dribble. I think it's a great move by Jim Boylan. Neville had three blocks in the first half, none in the second. And so he replaces Neville with Tilly at 6'8". Terry drives past Tilly and gets the layup. So they bring the better defensive team in, and what happens? They get a layup. Now UNLV picks him up full court. Four-point Rebel lead, and they back everybody off but Bailey. Plenty of time, no need to panic. Timeout used by Utah. They can bring Neville back in, set up a play, and then some. And uh, Jim Boylan says, give me the full timeout. I need all the time I got to talk about it because their season is boiled down to the last 65 seconds of this one. Well, obviously, this possession here is huge. Get it into the big guy. I know it sounds redundant, but that's the best weapon they have. Get it into him. Hopefully, the draw double team. Maybe be able to kick it out, and we'll see what happens. Time now to take a look at our serious player of the game. And Curtis Terry is the man. Well, he made a great play here at the end. And he has had, he's one of these guys. He, Tweak Adams has been there every game. Curtis Terry a little inconsistent. But tonight, he came out and played like a senior at the end of the year in the conference tournament. It makes sense because his other outing that would match up with this, with this would be the 22 he dropped on Utah on senior day that went with 10 assists. 19 points, five boards for Curtis Terry. Three of six from behind the arc. And the shots, the threes that he made, Tom, were not of the easy variety. His threes, but that's him. He makes tough shots when things are going good. I know right now, Jim Boylan, whatever play he's diagramming, it's to get the ball into that big guy. Luke Neville with 13 points, eight in the second half. Johnny Bryant's a nice scoring option. And Bryant will inbound. They need a bucket and a stop. Huge 33% from behind the line today. Neville has to hand it off to Dirtshire. Dangerous at midcourt. And obviously, the sooner they score, the better. But the key thing here is get a good shot, even if it takes the entire shot clock. Lawrence Bora trying to work his way around. Got a half a step, and Bailey stripped it away. This will be UNLV basketball.
Well, it looked like it might have gone off his leg. The official would look, seem to be pretty sure. You can see it right there. Oh, that's off his leg. That's a good call. They're going to have to foul now down four. And a quick foul on Darger. Lawrence Boris second to put Darger. Jim Boylan's not happy. He's going to get teed because he's really out on the court. He's got to be very careful because his team still has a chance to win this game. He's got to be very, very careful. How about the job of his players to calm him down? I thought maybe That's he a saw, first. I thought maybe he saw Heath Troyer in the stands. They went face to face after the Wyoming win in Laramie a couple of weeks ago. Jim Boylan not happy that Wyoming, with the game decided, threw down an alley oop dunk in the final seconds. Here's another look. Did Bailey hit this out or did it go off of Boar's leg? Right Bailey there. hit it. But what about that touch from the was right that, hand of Bailey? Was that a touch again? I tell you, Bailey did a pretty good job officiating it because he ran to the ref and said, going down the other way, and all of a sudden it was going the other way. It was close. I don't know if he touched it there. If he did, I mean, he could have. It was just a little inconclusive, I thought. Wink Adams won the game last night from the free throw line. He's got a second one coming. Utah still has plenty of time. But let me ask you a question. Is that a call maybe you get it home? I don't know. I mean, you can, you can say whatever you want, but who knows? The tournament has been played here except for a brief three-year stint at the Pepsi Center in Denver where it was a failure at the gate. Can't say that about it here. They don't have to take a three yet. Oh, they don't have to take a three, but they got to get a quick two. Johnny Bryant, ball in hand. Trailing by six, has Dercha, but had it tipped away. Down by six, Neville with the layup. Now that's a good foul. Another on Dercha. They foul Rougeau right away. 67% foul shooter, better than getting into wing hand of Adams' hand. And pardon me, the foul is on Bora. It's a third on Lawrence Bora. And so Rene Rougeau goes to the free throw line. Crowd behind us chanting MVP of Rene Rougeau, a double double tonight. Of his 11 rebounds, six have come on the offensive end. His first free throw attempt of the night is good. Still a two possession game. Hits them both. A dozen for Rougeau. Johnny Bryant in a hurry. Down by six. He wants the two and gets it. And the clock will stop looking for another foul. He did a good job there taking it right to the basket. You know Lon Kruger told his team don't foul. And that happens all the time. They don't want to foul. They end up giving a layup. What they needed to do there, UNLV, was at least make him switch hands one time so he eats up another couple of seconds. He just beelined it right to the basket. At what point when you're down six, is it too late to take two? We're at the 30 second mark now. If you're if you're if you if there's like 10 seconds to go, obviously you gotta take threes at that point. But you're not there yet. You're not you're 20 seconds away from being in that situation. 10 seconds to go down six, you gotta shoot a three quickly, foul, hope they miss, and come down and take another one at the buzzer. But right now you're not in that situation at all. Utah led by eight points midway through that first half. Midway through the second half, they held a two-point lead, and UNLV has led from then on out. Utes use their final timeout. What a job Jim Boylan has done coaching this team to get to this point, being this game in front of a hostile crowd here in Vegas. Now they got Luke Neville out. They got full court man-to-man -man pressure. They, they're running a face guard press. The guy not on the ball, looking to pick up an extra guy, and they get the ball. They get the ball to Wink Adams right away. They had to really do a better job of not letting him get it. It's a second foul on Sean Green. The Utah bench and Green on the floor thought that Adams had let go of that ball too early and it fell out of bounds. Kind of reminiscent of that, that Syracuse game at the end of the year where it was lost under their own basket, waiting for a foul and didn't get it. This time Adams did get the call. That was a Syracuse-Pittsburgh game. See, they got to try and face guard him and not let him catch that ball. Well, Jim Boyle, he's on top of every play, I'll tell you. His biggest complaint is that they couldn't win the close one in the second half of the season. They 
accomplished that last night in overtime against New Mexico to bounce the Lobos. 18 now for Wink Adams tonight. Again, it will be a six-point game if he makes this one. You say they can still go for two. Still go for two as long as it's quick. Now, if the clock starts running down, that's different. They they still, they got to do the same thing. Beeline it. And he missed the second. Beeline it to the basket. Durchin, cross midcourt. He wants a three. Rebound. Green up and in. His first bucket makes it a three-point game. Bailey all alone at the other end. They don't get it to him. And said Terry is fouled immediately with 18.7 left. Corey Bailey was all alone 80 feet away. And they didn't risk throwing it to him under the UNLV basket. Well, now you got a 73% shooter who's played great, by the way. He's a senior. This is the kind of guy that, after Wink Adams, Lon Kruger probably would like to see him with the ball, but that was way short. You know, there have been so few fouls and so, free, so few free throws shot. You've got a lot of guys who haven't been to the line yet. That was Terry's first of the night. That's, that's a fact that, too, Tom, no one's comfortable with that line right now except for Wink Adams. Neville comes out. Utah loads up on the shooters, bringing Kepke See, I, in. I didn't think they needed to do that yet, personally, but Jim knows his team better than I do. The lead is four. Johnny Bryant tried to draw contact. Garger has it. Tried to dribble it away. Now Adams has it. And he'll be fouled. Boylan wanted a jump ball. See, here's my thing. Why shoot it? Why do you have to have your three-point shooters in? It's a two-possession game, even if you make the three. So why not just take the two, throw them to the line, take the guarantee, not guarantee two, but they're probably going to let you go in and score. I just, you know, on a two-possession game, you didn't have to shoot three yet. And not only that, Tom, a force three. Yeah, if you get a good three, that's a different. I'm going to say don't shoot a three. Yeah, if you get a good one, of course, shoot it. But to force a three or to waste time looking for a three, I don't think was necessary. This is what the postseason's all about, isn't it? A Utah team that will still look to play some postseason games had one shot to make it to the NCAA tournament. And that was to come in here and play inspired, play inspired basketball, and they did. And they did. They gave it a run, but too much Wink Adams and Rene Rougeau and Curtis Terry. Three guys came up big today. Adams with 20 points on the night. It will be BYU and UNLV for the title again. Last year, the Rebels won by eight en route to a nice postseason run. Lon Kruger's team has another game left here at the Thomas and Mack Center. We've got game room coming up next. Our final score, 61-55. The updated brackets look like this. For the second straight year, it will be BYU and UNLV playing for the automatic berth in the Mountain West Conference Tournament Championship. The Cougars got past the Aztecs, the Rebels pass the Utes. Our final 61-55 UNLV. For Steve Lapis and our entire CSTV crew, I'm Tom Hart. For the latest scores, news, highlights, and analysis, log on to CSTV.com. This has been a presentation of CSTV, College Sports Television, the 24-hour College Sports Network from CBS Sports. Another thriller from Vegas. Now let's go back to game room.